Hello, guys. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening, teach. Um, good evening, teach. Hello, good evening. Teacher, I don't understand the last exercise. Oh, you didn't? Did uh, uh, the sentences mm -hmm. I know to do. Mm -hmm. So you didn't understand the last exercise, am I correct? Uh -huh. So is there, so what didn't you understand exactly? Uh, I don't know, I don't know que hacer, no sé que hacer. So you don't know what to do. All right, so we are going to try to figure that out today. So probably there, there was, well, that was actually very tricky, right? Just to verify, I was trying to check if you were able to get the ideas but some of you have been texting me as well that the majority of you didn't understand the last exercise so we are going to work on that today okay okay gracias teacher all right so thank you so much for being on time girls and carlos as well so most of the time it's you're always on time that's very good well, it's already time, eight o'clock. So um, we're going to try to start now uh, because we have just one hour. So as I was saying to Lisette, we're going to try to resolve the last exercise because the majority of you did not understand that well. But we're going to try to figure that out. So, um, let me share here this line. So this is the exercise that you didn't understand. Am I correct? Right. Uh, yes. All right. So do you remember that I told you that there is and there are is similar to exist? Do you remember that? Okay, is the substituir. Uh, it was similar. Are they, era uh -huh, similar are, a substituir. Uh -huh. So we, instead uh -huh. of using the verb exist, we were going to say there is or there are, for example. Uh -huh. And number one, la número uno estaba super fácil. Solo era de decir, como teníamos uh -huh. two apples, and if we have more than two, what are we going to use? There is or there are? There are. So I was going to say there are two apples on the table. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so in actually in sentence number two, what I what you supposed to do it was only to avoid or to omit the verb exist. Ya que exist, como les dije, es lo mismo que there is and there are. So, en este caso, ¿qué íbamos a hacer? Íbamos a decir, there is a boy in the street. So, that was pretty much it. So, that's why I told you it was kind of tricky. Tenía como sus trucos ahí to try to verify if you were able to understand what was the trick over there. But I would like to see, the, did you complete the exercises or no? No, you didn't? This is not. <laughs> no, all right. So. ¿Que es en específico, teacher? No. No. What about? This one. No? Uh, yes. yes. You did that one? 
So I'm, I'm gonna go into, uh, I don't know if you did this one, but if you did, let me know. So we are going to try to resolve. But I think that it's, for me, it's more important this part and this one. So we're going to go first with this part. And um, I will see if you can help me with that. So it will be randomly. And I will like, let me see. Uh, Jacqueline. Hello, Jacqueline. So can you tell me, or can you, Jess, can you tell me what's the answer in number one? Are there. Are there? Are there, yes, actually. Are there any apples on the table? So number two, Carlos. Carlos Guevara. Oh, I listen to a lot of like a background noise. No, no, no oh, you didn't complete it? Are there? Are there? Yes. What about number three? Is there? Are there? Are there? Porque habla sobre algo incontable. Orange juice habla sobre el jugo. Is there? Who said that? ¿Quién dijo eso? Who said Are there? Who said that? What's your name? Sara Aguilar. Sara. All right, so it's 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 kind of kind of like that, but um, in this case, even though, aunque estamos hablando de algo incontable, eh, en este caso para las cosas incontables, no utilizamos. Tenemos que ver. En este caso, si yo digo, hay jugo de naranja en la mesa. So will that be countable or how would you say that? There is or are there or is there? In my opinion, uh, is, is there. Why? Because, because it's um, incontable. Incontable. So we're going to go to this part, guys. ¿Se recuerdan acá donde decía que íbamos a utilizar there is para uncountable now? So, there you have the answer. So, in this case, it's going to be, is there any orange juice on the table? But that was very good observation, Sarah. Okay. Thank you for that. So, um, I think that you, it's very clear this part. So, let me, let me see someone. Vamos a agarrar a quemar ropa. ¿verdad? Vamos a ver if you are able to, to do the changes. Let me see. Um, Elvis. Hello, sir. Hola. Um, can you please help me with the number four? Just tell me what comes to your mind without even asking or telling me or asking me for explanation. Just tell me what you think when you see that sentence. Yes. Is there a party with the system? Repeat it again. Is there? Is there a party? Uh huh. Will exist tomorrow. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Leave it there. I will explain you later on. Okay. So, Miriam Eraso. Let me see. What about this number three? Perdón, no estuve en la clase de anoche. ¿En qué consiste la, la actividad esta? Oh, so you were not here. 
C. All right, so no, no problem. So I will, I will try to explain you later on. These um, yes. exercises is about there is and there are. So uh, we were checking that topic, but let me see. What about you, Elizabeth Campos? Were you in the class? Hi, teacher. Were you in the class? Yes, yesterday? Yes. All right, so what about number three? Esa parte no la hice, teacher, pero creo que es. Just tell me. Hay que hacer la respuesta de esto, de la pregunta. Not necessarily, not necessarily. What you have to do, for example, if you see a question, transform that to also a question, but obviously using there is and there are. There, there is, no, quiero ver. There is, ay, no, no sé. There, quiero ver. No? No, teacher, no. Es que lo que pasa es que no entiendo, porque vaya, ahorita esa es una pregunta. Does an ATM exist near here? Mm -hmm. Pero le hace falta el is there. Hay un truco ahí no. that I'm thinking that you didn't pay attention. So, um, el, uh, Lisette uh, asked me that question before you connected to the class. So that's probably you didn't listen to that explanation. Lo que íbamos a hacer en esto era bien simple. Se recuerdan que yo les dije que había un, un verbo, en este caso, que era el equivalente a there is or there are. Do you remember that? No. Excuse me. No. No. So I wow. said that there is and there are, it was equal to exist. And here I have the proofs. Y aquí le, va, le voy a enseñar where did I say that. Let me see. Can you see it? La número uno donde estaba, the meaning. It says the expression there is and there are, are used to indicate that something exists. So it, that means that is, there is and there are, it's equal to that. And because on the exercise, let me go back. Oh my God, this is, this just gotta stop. All right. So if you can see in the exercise, we have the verb exist. So, ¿qué es lo que íbamos a hacer? Omitir el verbo exist for there is and there are. Vamos a ver the example with number two. Let's see what happens. If I try to omit, I try to omit that part, it will be something like, let me see. So it will be something like this. Oh, it's not working though. All right. So I, I'm just gonna say it. So if I, if I change the verb exist, la oración quedaría de la siguiente manera. There is a boy in the street. ¿Por qué? O estoy omitiendo exist. ¿Qué pasa con number three? Si voy a omitir exist y porque veo que es una question, yo voy a decir, is there an ATM? Near here, que estoy omitiendo de nuevo exist y obviamente el auxiliar does que se utiliza para el simple present. So, with that being said, let me see. So, but you got the idea, I mean, because the other ones, that, that's another. La número cuatro, ¿cómo queda? Si esa, esa es con futuro, ¿cómo queda? Queda igual. 
No, that will be that will be different. So that's why I just wanted to to try. Let me see. That will be something like there will be a party tomorrow. There will be a party tomorrow. Okay, so that that's gonna be it. What about what about this one? Que hay de la number five? It was going to be something like there where a lot of illnesses in the the fourteen and so on and so on, right? So that was the main idea. That's what I told you. So por eso les dije que estaban, habían trucos. It was very tricky. It was very tricky just for, for me to verify if you were able to understand that. So um, if there's any question, guys, at this moment, ask the questions. Because today we're going to see a very different topic. So in order for you to really understand or to have this information very clear, very, very clear, I need you to ask me those questions. So there's no questions at all. Porque yo lo que quiero saber entonces es que el there is y el there are se van a adecuar a las preguntas que hay, digamos, si están en pasado. Exactly. Porque como recuérdense que lo que vamos a utilizar y lo que vamos that we are going to change is only the verb be. El verbo to be. That's the only thing that we're going to change. For example, if we want to talk about the future, you know that you're going to use will. If, you're, if you want to talk about the past, you know that you're going to use was and where. That is the past form of the verb be, right? So that will adequate according to the tense that you are talking about. So is that clear? Thank you, teacher. Yes. All right. So if there's no questions, guys, I will start with the topic that we have for today. Uh, today's topic is very, very easy. It's not that complicated. I'm pretty sure that some of you already know about this. So we're going to, to try to do this. Um, let me see. This computer is, oh my God. I don't know what's going on with my computer. Just give me a moment. All right. All right, got it. All right. So uh, this is the this is today's class, guys. The use of a and some in any. You already know about this. So before going to the main topic. Can someone tell me what you know about this? Hello. Did you, did you understand what I said? I mean, can someone tell me what you know about this information? A and some and any. Is there something that you know? No, you don't know nothing, nothing, nothing. No, nobody. Son uh, adverbios de cantidad. We're going there, yes, something like that. Do you know how to use them? No? Solo el de A y M. All right, yes, that's the most common one. All right, so we are going to try to understand these guys. And please, I need you to pay attention to this because I got like last module, I was working with one group and they got confused, but very, very confused 
with the use of some and any, because sometimes it might be a little confused for you if it is the first time that you are actually studying this topic. But we are going to try to understand as much as possible. So guys, once again, if you have questions, ask the questions, please. No se queden con la duda. No hay ninguna pregunta tonta. So ask the questions. So to start, I will need some volunteers to help me reading all these parts. Volunteers. Solo quiero uno. Yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right, Jacqueline. Yeah, Thank you so much, Jacqueline. So who else said Joe? Oh, Anna Jancy. All right. So uh, Jacqueline, help me with the part of A, the first part and this part over here. And J Anna Jancy, you will help me with the use of N, okay? Please. Okay. Yeah. We ask. E and articles mm -hmm. with singular countable nouns. Mm -hmm. and my brother has a dog and my sister has a cat. Okay. There is an accident on the cornet. See, sí, cornet. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hey. A is used when the next word starts with a consonant sound, a book, a guitar, a friend, a university. The start on the word university sounds like you, a consonant sound. Very good. So, uh, Ana Yancy, go ahead with the next one. So, I will explain okay. later. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Is used when the next word start with a vowel sound, mm -hmm. an apple, an ice cream, an orange, a or. Um, no, I'm going to do the rest. Just leave it there. It's the okay. little, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the little is uh -huh. this word in the ceiling, so it sounds like it start with. Okay. All right, um, guys, so if you can notice right here, the information says that A and N are articles that we use for countable nouns. As you can see, the use of A, the letter A, it says that when the next word starts with a consonant sound, what does that mean? that that's not necessarily, o no necesariamente, debe de empezar con una consonante. It's very important that it is a consonant sound. Why? If you can notice right here, we have the examples, a book, a guitar, a friend, and a university. ¿Por qué university está ahí? Si se supone que ahí solo van las que empiezan con consonant. Por la pronunciación. Exactly. It is because of the pronunciation. Why? Because when we pronounce this word, the pronunciation that we do with the letter U, it's similar that if you are saying U, for example, a, a university, U. Un hueso. The sound of the this word starts yeah. with the letter Y, right? Even though the word starts with a vowel. So that's why it's very important that you know this. La regla general dice que cuando una palabra empieza por una consonante. But it is also important that you listen to the consonant sound. So in that way, you don't get confused. ¿Por qué? Si decimos a university, that's not okay. So <clears throat> even though it is star with the letter U, you gotta be careful on that, okay? So the same happens when we have the N. 
It says that it's used when the next word starts with a vowel sound. And we have examples right here, an apple, an ice cream, an orange, an hour, an hour. If you notice here, si se fijan, esta palabra starts with a consonant, no con una vocal. Entonces, ¿qué está haciendo ahí? It is because of the sound. El sonido que hacemos in English, it's because the letter H is <coughs> silent. So we say an hour, hour. So if you listen to the pronunciation, we're saying the letter A. We are not pronouncing the consonant, even though the consonant, it's there. So we got to be careful with that. That's the first part of this. So here we have the general information about some and any. Pay attention to this. Some is used with positive sentences and any with negative sentences. That's the general rule. So we have some examples right here. Number one, I have some information for you about flies to Paris. As you can see, we're using some because we are having a positive sentence and an uncountable noun that is information. So I need you to be clear that we are going to use for you. this with countable and non-countable and uncountable plural nouns. So if you can notice in number two, it says, I don't have any information for you information about flights to Paris. Flight Paris. So if you can notice here, we are using any because we, are, have, uh -huh. we have a negative sentence, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. So that's the only thing that you have to remember. Some for positive, any for negatives. That's it. So moving forward. Um, we can also use there is, as you can see here, there is with any. So there isn't any milk in the refrigerator. I draw some picture, some pictures. So it says that we usually, guys, determines both plural can, uh, countable nouns and uncountable. So what I need you to understand always to keep that information in your head or in your mind, that some will be with positive, countable or uncountable nouns and any for negatives, countable, and uncountable nouns as well. So that's the only information that I need you to understand. When it comes to negative sentences, um, here we have, and when it comes to questions, the one that we are going to use is going to be any. So, ahora le vamos a agregar a any algo más. Some, Lo vamos a utilizar para positive sentences, any para negative, y questions también vas, vamos a utilizar any. So, that's it. There's some exceptions, hay excepciones, como dos excepciones that we are going to see later on. But the general, la regla general dice any for negative and any for questions. Espérate, mira a ver qué tiene la goma, mira. Example. ¿Qué tiene? Vení, vení. ¿Qué te pasó? Uh, Señor Gomita. Ana Yancy, can you please turn your microphone off? Ay, perdón, teacher. No, it's okay. It's okay. So, uh, as you can see right here, the question, it says, do you have any friend in Chicago? We are using any. We can also use there is and there are with any, but only when we have questions or negatives. Example, is there any pollution in the city? So that's the only thing that you need to remember. Let me see. 
Um, okay. Any questions so far, guys? We're going fast because this topic is not that difficult. That's why uh, I told you, if you have questions, ask the questions. So here we have the exception, guys, and pay attention to this. Uh, we can use also some for making offer or for offering something or requesting something. Example, si tú vas a ofrecer algo, puedes utilizar, would you like some, in this example, in este caso, bread, si tú le estás ofreciendo algo, uh, algo a alguien, for example, coffee, for example, water, for example, soda, you can say, would you like some soda? Would you like some coffee? Would you like some bread? So in this case, we are going to use some, vamos a utilizar some, aunque ya sabemos que para question no utilizamos some. Es por eso que son excepciones, right? Solo en estos dos casos vamos a utilizar some para questions. De ahí, regla general, any siempre va a ser para preguntas. So keep this in mind. If you ask a request or if you ask or if you offer something, you will need to use some instead of any. So if you offer, would you like some? Or if you request, could I have some? Could I have some? So would you like some or could I have some are going to be the only two exceptions that we will have for some. ¿Cuál va a ser la excepción para any? What's the exception for any? When the positive sentence has a negative sense. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Cuando la, la, la oración está positiva, pero tiene un sentido negativo. How is that possible? ¿Cómo es posible? Here we have an example that it says, I refuse to give him any money. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Me rehúso a darle algo de dinero. Aunque ya sabemos nosotros that we already know that for positive sentences, we use some, this exception, you need to remember it. Why? Because if you are using a positive sentence, but the sense of the sentence is negative, you will have to use any instead of some. Is that clear? Hello. Uh, uh, Is that I clear? Is that clear? Veo rostros de perdición, vea. Algunos tratando de todavía agarrar qué estoy haciendo aquí, porque entré a la clase, vea. No entiendo nada. So, is that clear? ¿Podría explicarlo más despacio, por favor? All right, so. Um, las ¿Y por qué vamos a usar en? Okay, so the exception, I will, I, will, I will tell you again. La excepción para some únicamente va a ser cuando estemos ofreciendo o solicitando algo. Offering or requesting something, que son estas dos preguntas que siempre se van a utilizar. Como ya sabemos, al inicio les dije, ¿cuál es el que vamos a utilizar para preguntas? Some o any? Any. Any. Por any. eso es que es excepción, porque si ustedes se fijan, son preguntas las que tenemos acá. Pero como son excepciones, no vamos a utilizar any, sino que vamos a utilizar some. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos ofreciendo o estamos solicitando. If I say, si le pregunto, like an example to Claudia, if I ask her, uh, Claudia, would you like some tea? Le estoy ofreciendo, le estoy preguntando, 
¿Le gustaría un poco de té? ¿O te gustaría un poco de té? So that's why, esa es la razón por la, que, por la cual eh, debemos utilizar some como una excepción. Pero la regla dice que para las demás preguntas siempre utilizar any. Por eso son excepciones. Si yo vengo y le quiero solicitar algo a alguien y le digo, Juliana, could I have some water? Supongamos que eh, me encuentro a Juliana y le digo, Juliana, can I have some water? Y ella tiene su botellita. Yo le estoy solicitando a ella si me puede dar un poco de agua de la que ella tiene en su botella. So, estas dos excepciones de ofrecer y solicitar are going to be the two exceptions. En estos únicos dos casos, we are going to use some. Y no any, aunque sean preguntas. Now, let's go with the exception for any. Vamos a ver la excepción para any. Sabemos que en las Oraciones positivas, ¿cuál vamos a utilizar? Some or any? Some. Some. Some, yes. Some. Vamos a utilizar some. some para las oraciones positivas. Pero en el caso de que la oración esté positiva, pero el sentido de la oración esté negativo, que es algo muy diferente, en ese caso vamos a utilizar any en vez o sí, en vez de some. Am I being clear? Is that clear now? Por ejemplo, en, en el ejemplo que está acá, en el ejemplo, it says, I refused to give him any money. Como que re rechacé darle algo de dinero. Si bien la oración no tiene algo que me diga que está negativo, porque no tiene not, no tiene don't, no tiene didn't, no tiene nada que me diga que está negativo. Pero si yo digo que me retracté darle dinero, el sentido de la oración es negativo. Entonces, that's why... Aunque la oración está en positivo y no hay algo que me diga que esté en negativo, el sentido de la oración es negativo porque yo estoy tratando de decir que no le di ningún tipo de dinero. Porque me eh, eh, no, no, no le quise dar. So I don't know if that's the idea. The idea is clear now. I need a yes or a no because I don't know, I'm lost. Yes. All right, cool. So let's move on. Let's move on. Here we have the some detail examples. Esto ya lo vimos, example number one. Cuando ofrecemos algo, cuando preguntamos algo y cuando sugerimos algo. Estos son otros tipos en las que vamos a utilizar también some. Ya vimos here, offer and request. ¿Sí? Aquí vamos a ver asking, cuando yo le pregunto a alguien por algo. En este caso también, we have to use some. Ejemplo, si yo estoy en la casa, un suponer en la casa de alguien, y vengo y le digo, eh, ¿Me puede dar un poco de sal o puede, puede pasarme la sal, por favor? ¿O que puede tener un poco de sal? Aunque ya sabemos que para preguntas utilizamos any, porque yo estoy pidiendo algo, as an exception, como una excepción, tengo que utilizar some instead of using any. Cuando yo sugiero algo a alguien, también tengo que utilizar some, aunque yo ya sepa que para preguntas utilizamos any. In the example number one, as you can see right there, it says, why don't we watch some movies on TV tonight? Yo estoy con alguien y le digo, ¿por qué no vemos algunas películas en la televisión hoy por la noche? 
I am suggesting something to someone. So those exception, guys, you need to memorize them. Yes, memorize them. Because if not, you will be lost. And you are going to be using in a very different ways um, any and some. Puede ser que en un momento se confundan y estén utilizando in the wrong way any or some. Yes, am I clear? Choso. Yes. Esos yes me dejan así como en duda, vea. So. Es que todavía no estamos asimilando. All right, just trying to, okay, yes. So, but if there is any question, guys. So far, so good, no questions at all. So let me ask you one more time. Let me see, let me ask someone randomly. Uh, Ana Maria, hello. Are you sick, Maria? No? Kind of. Oh, but can you can you talk? All right. So um. no, you can't. Yes, can you or you can't? I can. All right. So what are the uh what are the the four? The four ways or the four exceptions that we have for some. Mm. La acabamos de ver, vea, o todavía están sorprendidos. Ay. Ya estoy sorprendida. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So let me see. Juliana, what are the four exceptions that we have for some? Mm -hmm. Number one. Um, some. Yes. Que for sea, some. Que es, que la, sea afirmativo. Pero que sea una, una oración afirmativa. Pero, pero ne, con negación. <laughs> no, that, that's. Son las la excepciones de some. That, that's an exception for any. That's not for, for some. Shayla, I see that you raise your hand. So tell me then, what are the four exceptions that we have for, uh, for some? Um, in Spanish, cuando estamos ofreciendo o okay. estamos solicitando algo en una pregunta. We have, we have two, offering and requesting, we have two. What are the other ones? Request. Yeah, request and offer two. ¿Cuáles yes. son las otras? Las otras dos. Um, ah, esa le entendí. La, las otras sería. Uh -huh. Cuando sugiere yeah. algo. So, uh -huh. Suggesting. Y cuando estamos preguntando, teacher. Exactly. Aquí estaba, vea. Solo esperaba que alguien viera aquí en la, en the screen, que ahí estaban las respuestas, vea. But it looks like you're lost. Que como que están perdidos en este momento. So that's why I was asking you. Try to, try to verify that. So, if there's no questions, I will move to the main thing. Y aquí llegamos a todo lo que acabamos de hablar anteriormente. Here we have the exceptions. Exceptions and everything about it. So, we, have, we will have a review. Vamos a revisar una vez más. We use A plus a consonant sound. Uh, Sara Elizabeth, help me reading example number one, please. There is a bottle on the table. 
There is a bottle on the table. Thank you so much. We use N plus a vowel sound. Let me see, Juliana, help me with example number two. There is an apple on the table. There is an apple on the table. Very good. We use some with affirmative sentences. Uh, let me see, Mr. Elvis, sample number one. No, I cannot listen, sir. Your microphone is off. There is some cheese in the fridge. In the fridge, very good. We use any for negative sentences. Miriam Erasso, example. There is not any cheese in the fridge. In the French. fridge, okay. French. We also use any for questions. Maria Luz de Nieto. Example. Is, um, is there any cheese in the fridge? In the fridge. In the fridge. Vea el vocabulario de la casa, vea. All right. So, uh, it says also that we can use A and M with countable singular nouns. We can also use some and any with countable plural nouns. And on countables, we can use some and any as well. Now you know the exceptions. Aquí nos falta una, ¿verdad? Solo tenemos tres. ¿Cuál es la que falta? Vamos a ver. If you're paying attention. The question. Solicitamos. Estamos Request. Solicitando. Very good. So we have offer, ask for, suggest something, and request. So let me see, uh, si falta la de request, what is the question for the request one? What is the question? Could you like some? Exactly, very good. So, with the exceptions, we can use some, and obviously the exception that we have with any. So with this being said, guys, is there any questions so far or we are completely clear as the water? Claro como el agua? Como el horchata, teacher. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so, 100% like lost. So, si hacemos un examen ahorita, ¿lo pasamos o lo fallamos? Con cinco eh, creo que lo pasamos. 3.2. <laughs> All right. So, if there's no question, guys, here we come with the exercises. So that's why I was saying questions. Eh, yo tengo una duda. Yes, go ahead. No sé so, cómo preguntarle. Este, no, I mean, say it in Spanish. Con respecto a la excepción de any, mm -hmm. eh, no podría dar otro ejemplo, porque ahí mencionaba que era cuando la pregunta parecía negativa, ¿verdad? Pero mm -hmm. como... ¿Algún otro ejemplo como para quizás tener un poquito más claro esa parte? En sí no es pregunta, sino que es una oración positiva. Los verbos que generalmente vamos a ver es el, y, y casi siempre el único verbo que vamos a utilizar para algo de sentido negativo es como ese verbo que vimos, refuse que significa como no querer retractarse de algo. Eh, como, how do we say that in Spanish? Sí, retractarse de algo. 
Ese va a ser el único verbo que tiene sentido negativo, aunque lo utilicemos en positivo. Así que eso es lo único que necesitamos saber. Ese verbo. That's the only one. So cuando okay. veamos ese verbo, nosotros vamos a saber, ok, desde el momento que yo veo I refuse, ya estoy negando. Porque yo estoy diciendo me retracto automáticamente. I refuse, me retracto. So ya el sentido a partir de ese momento is negative. Ok, excelente, ya más uh -huh. claro. Gracias. All right. Any other question? All right, if there's no question, I'm guessing that everything is clear. So here we have exercise number one. Let me know when it's done so I can move forward. Yeah, teacher. All right, number two. Otra vez la, la otra imagen, por favor. Number one. And number two. Done with this one? If we have. Yes, yes. Like, Did someone say bitch over there? Yes. And well, that's it. So I'm going to explain you this part, guys. Do you understand this part, what you're going to do? No? Yes? Yes, teacher. ¿En qué consiste esta teacher? Which one? La que está ahorita en pantalla. All right. So in this one, as it says right here, we have to use there is, plus, eight, some, or any. Utilizando there is or there are, negative or positive, con lo que acabamos de ver. A and some and any. Estas imágenes de acá les van a dar la respuesta de qué es lo que van a utilizar. Por ejemplo, en la número uno tenemos swimming pool. Y el ejemplo dice, there is a swimming pool. So, do you get the idea? Esas sí. frases que aparecen en la imagen son las que vamos a utilizar para la oración. Exactamente. Dependiendo lo que se ve acá, así es lo que van a poner en las oraciones. Utilizando there Pero is, es, there are. Es, yes. No. El cheque es positivo y la X es, no, digamos, negativa. Ahí está la respuesta. Mm -hmm. That's the, the answer over there. Mm -hmm. So, let's go now. Let's go to work. Let's see. If you have questions, I'm going to be checking the groups. So go ahead and join your groups.
Hello, Elena. Are you having? Hola. Sí, es que me sacó. El, el, no sé qué pasó, pero me salí de, del grupo sin. No sé cómo. All right, just let me go ahead and add you. Okay. Can you see the, the link? Gracias. All right. Okay. Uh, there is a desk. A desk. Uh, a desk. Uh, but there isn't. And it's negative. There isn't any. Yes. Any book, book, bookcase. Bookcase in my room. There is also. Pero tenemos que ver, acuérdense de que el some y el any solo se van a utilizar en plural. Y el a, el a y el a sí, es el singular. Independientemente si es negativo o positivo. Porque el donde dice pateriza, eh, bookcase creo que está en singular. Entonces ahí creo que sería eh, a pero es uh -huh. que él, si usted lo traduce, significa ninguna. Entiendo yo, o no sé si estoy confundido. Ajá, ajá, pero acuérdense que es para singular. O sea, es, perdón, es para plural. Plural. El N y el SOM. Sí, es cierto. Oh, Entonces, o sea, no que ninguno se va a utilizar, pero en cuando se hable en plural. Ah, ya. Ajá. Entonces ahí sería a bookcase. A bookcase. Ajá, a, bookcase. Uh -huh. a bookcase in my room. Uh -huh. There is also. 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 Yes. Some. Some. They are some, sería. Sí, porque creo que es plural. Oh, okay. Igual aquí ya lo dice plural. Okay. There are. En la número C, este sería en la número 9. Ver. En la uh, there are, sería any, any toys in a box. No, ¿verdad? Sí, sí ¿verdad? Sería some, sería some, some. porque no lo están negando. Some. 
Porque es de dar, es positivo, no está negando ahí nada. Sí. Positivo, pero es afirmativo, está pensando en otro. Tom sería también. En la box, box, there isn't. Aquí sí sería un negativo, sería en. Sería un singular, isn't. En. En el carpet. En el carpet. Open the floor. What is favorite room? Got some. Check. Favorite room. No, pero ahí no. No, ahí no. Ahí no vamos a decir nada. Exacto. Y pasamos a la siguiente. Okay. Eh... No, porque esta no la, están, no la pueden ver, ¿verdad? ¿O sí? No, no, no compartila, por favor. Ajá, el ejemplo de es la primera, ¿verdad? Este es el... Ahora. Ah, ese sí. Entonces el primero era... There is... He encontrado. La última, perdón, Ani. La última... Sí, Ani. Me gusta de pasar a la siguiente porque ya casi creo que nos regresamos al grupo. Ajá. Well, okay, guys, um, I think that we have enough time and probably, well, I was checking all the groups and I saw that most of you only complete one exercise, just the first one. And some of you were working on or trying to start exercise number two, but most of you only resolve exercise number one. So um, we're going to do that one because of the time and because that one is very easy, so it's not complicated. So let me share the screen, okay. <clears throat> All right, so here we have, let me see, uh, <clears throat> how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then ten. Yes, we have 10. So let me see. Sheila, number one. Carlos Guevara, number two. Ana Yancy, number three. Ana Maria, four. Maria Luz Nieto, five. Claudia Iraeta, six. Juliana, seven. Miriam, eight. Elizabeth Campos, nine. And Brenda Villeda, ten. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, John. I have a big room, too. It's blue. Blue is my favorite color. There is a big bed. Very good. Thank you. Number two. Number two. In my room. Ya se les olvidó el número. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hello. In my room and a uh -huh. pillow on it. Uh, repeat it again, please. In my room and a pillow on it. No, in that case, it's going and. to be some. Why? Um. Why? Because we're talking in plural and we're saying pillows. Mm. In plural. Some All right. pillows. So number on three. It. Okay, there is an death, but there isn't. So 
repeat it again. You said A N letter A letter N N and that's there is uh, there is N mm -hmm. that's no that's actually there is a this a desk the letter a la letra a there ah aha uh -huh. all right so there number is and desk the okay. number 4 thank you so much number 4 but but there isn't a bookcase in my room very good, but there isn't a bookcase in my room. So number five. There is also an any M chair M chair. M. You said you said any any is that your answer? Any M child M our child. Esta es la respuesta. Maria, mm -hmm. any? For you, I mean for you. Any? No, that one no, is an, an, an armchair. An armchair. Okay. So the okay. next one. And some curtains in front of the window. Very good. And some curtains in front of the window. Very good. The next one. There aren't any painting on the wall. Excellent. There aren't any paintings on the wall. The next one. Hello. Oh, tengo apagado el micrófono. Voy. Painting on the wall board. There are some posters. There are some posters. Very good. So the next one. There are some toys in a box. There are some toys in a box. And the last one. But there isn't any carpet on the floor. Excellent. So that's, I think that that's very clear. So the other exercises, guys, if you can work on them at your house, and we are going yes. to start with that tomorrow, okay? But if you can, that's not an obligation. But if you want to practice, that's up to you. If not, we are going to resolve that at the beginning of the class tomorrow, okay? So uh, with that being said, guys, it is all for today. Do not forget to keep working on the platform. If you have questions, ask the questions so I'm working with your process and agency. I already sent information, so they will get in contact with you. And uh, the other ones, if you have questions, let me know and keep working on the platform. Porque eso va a ser su nota final, ¿verdad? To go to the next module. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for coming to the class and see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.